job. It's horrible, man. If we'd have left this like this, nobody would have ever said the first builder did that. It would have been on extensive. Ah, where to begin? Man, what do you do with this thing? Party, we go to shows. Yeah, this just isn't keeping up. Let's get crazy, all right? Ice, beer, food. This thing's going to be so loud, it's going to slap them right in the face. Oh, my God. God. Man, that's crazy. I love it. I'm Bill Carlton. I built my first truck when I was 16. And ever since, me and my guys have been out here creating with our hands. Building the biggest, lowest, baddest custom trucks and cars in the game. People don't come here for what they need. They come here for what they want. This is Texas Metal. Every day on my way to work, you know, I always pick up some breakfast for myself. And I tend to pick up a little extra for the dogs in the streets. When I get to the shop, I usually have three or four dogs waiting for me around my car. Here at Extensive, you know, we like to take care of business. That's inside the shop, outside the shop, it goes all the way around. And when I say outside the shop, friendly. They just come up into the shop, walk around, look around, check out the new projects, and go on with their day. Don't drop them off here, but the ones who need help, we got a big heart and try to help them all the time. After a little bit of TLC, you know, they become part of our gang. So just like everybody takes care of each other here at the shop, we got to take care of them and they take care of us. My friend Dorian owns PSE, you know, our diesel guys. Says he has a customer with, you know, a truck that has a few little issues. So today we're going to get it in and check it out. You know, hearing creaks and moans in a truck that high off the ground could mean multiple things. Could be just a little lube here and there, or it could be a catastrophe waiting to happen. What's up, Bill? Back again. How's it going, man? CJ. How you doing, man? Nice, nice to meet you. you. This is the one you were telling me about, huh? That's the one, man. Man, it looks good from here, but you got some problems underneath. A huh? lot of problems. It's all yours now. Man, let's check it out. Yeah, I'll let y'all talk. I'm gonna go talk to Rudy. You see a couple issues just as soon as you walk up to it, huh? Just all the welding and grinding and mm -hmm. everything up front, it just looks, man, you can't have that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh, man. Told you it was bad. His drop downs are just super sketchy, man. There's nothing even holding this but bolts on the outside. Man, that holds the whole weight of the the truck, your load, everything. There's nothing to hold this thing from flipping out. Man, that is really dangerous. A stock 2017 F-350 with no lift weighs over 8,000 pounds. This is exactly what I didn't want to see. A truck this high that weighs this much that somebody could be driving down the road next to my family and yours. I mean, it's super unsafe, and this is something that needs to be addressed immediately. Oh, man. I thought this was the bad part, but that's... It needs a lot of attention back there, Bill. You don't even have really any miles on this thing, and it's already the welds are breaking, the plate's bending, bag mounts are all twisted. The four-link bracket is about to rip off the axle, and whoever did this has no business building anything like this at all. And the sad part is it hasn't even been driven, really. Man, thank God you didn't get in it and drive it down the street and hook a trailer. Good. I go to shows, and we travel all across the country, and this is one of the trucks that I use to do most of the traveling with, and I have a lot of weight back there that I pull around, too, and a lot of money back there, too. So if something happens, I, I don't know what I would have done. When I picked it up, I didn't know that it was that bad. It was that crazy. What do you put behind this? You got a gooseneck trailer mm -hmm. for this thing? I got a 40-foot. I've got two matching rigs. I got a big 95 old body style. And I got a, another matching Tahoe. And they all go on that 40 foot, so I needed to do what I, I bought it to do. Oh, you want to be able to actually use it? Yeah. I need a usable dually. <laughs> right now, I can't even drive it. Feels like it's going to fall apart. Man, I've seen this look a million times. When you're giving someone the bad news, he paid good money for somebody to do this to his vehicle, and we got to redo it again. That's how the tree of shame was built. Let's get this thing unloaded, man. We'll get going on it, and we'll make it right for you. Looking forward to it. Let's go make it official. Let's do it. You know, 
this is Texas, so everybody wants, you know, custom vehicle. Because of that, there's almost an endless supply of customers that want to get work done to their vehicle, and there's plenty of shops around. Just take advantage of that. Don't really know what they're doing. They just want to make a quick buck, and this is a prime example. Unfortunately, we do seem to be careful of who does your work for you. You know, especially on a project of this size, man, if, as heavy as this thing is, it's probably 8,500 pounds. That going at 70, 80 miles an hour and something breaking on this thing, this thing is going to somersault down the road and, and it's going to kill somebody. When we're done with this truck, this thing's not only going to look cooler, it's going to be way safer. I didn't know Fisher Price made live kits. <laughs> <laughs> this is scary. This is super dangerous. There is no kind of support here holding this to the frame other than I think they have one or two bolts underneath here. That's it. Bolts on the outside, a couple of them are just for looks. They're just stuck in the hole with silicone. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's horrible, man. It's really scary. And please tell me he didn't drive this thing here. Man, he didn't drive it. He's only drove it around the park a lot, maybe a quarter mile half a mile. That's all the damage of just the stopping and starting with this much weight with some shady brackets like that. I can't believe somebody sold him this job. I mean, that's just, unfortunately, that's what, you know, a lot of people don't know. They're driving around with stuff like this. There's definitely a few things that we got to address on this thing. One of the first ones is putting some support back into this, attaching it to the frame, making it super safe and strong. We can use what's here. The basic design is here. The geometry is, for the most part, correct. Build some supports, some nice tubular supports to connect each mm -hmm. thing. We could powder coat it blue to match all the rest of the truck. And that'll tie everything in together. You know, next, we're just gonna pull the axle completely out. Let's start over fresh, cut everything off. The four link brackets, the bag brackets. I mean, all of it's trash. We'll build all new bracketry incorporate some tube work in that also so it looks cool and is really strong we got a lot of stuff to do just everywhere you look there's something going on at least we got a lot of stuff we can put on the tree of shame definitely get that extensive forest going <laughs> yeah, there's gonna be a lot let's go man let's get ready First thing we gotta do when we, before we lift this truck, we gotta release the air pressure out of the bags. Like that. This is like a crime scene investigation. Tim and John gotta go through every inch of this truck to find all the bad work, tear it all out. Then we can start to make things right. Now look at this. We got a rub mark here from the tire. If it would've rubbed even more, it would've eventually went all the way through and we would've lost air pressure in this corner and would've just been a disaster. When you remove that bag on that side, was it tight? Had a little rock to it. We got like eight inch gap between the base of the bag and where it's supposed to sit. One turn, one turn and it came off. Look at that, look how many threads was holding, just one thread. They're on even cuts, even strip bolts that are welded together. You know you're not supposed to weld bolts, right? Because it weakens them. The bad problem is when they did all this weld, then they had to cut the bracket so it would fit. You got a weak point on top, might as well make the bottom one weak too, huh? This plate comes all the way down to here and over. Here and over. And nothing but in the it's back. Hollow inside, huh? Nothing tying them together. So all it is is a big pry bar just peeling that metal away. You see, That's why the bar, seven foot long. When that bar moves up, all it's doing is peeling this back like a tin can. This is the weakest point right here. It's just gonna start peeling that metal up. Oh, where to begin? In order for John not to even get started on this rear end, let's cut everything off of it that was done before, go back to stock, start over from scratch, and do it 100% right.
we really cut a lot of awful metal work off the 350. Also, we can rebuild it the right way. We're gonna keep the existing drop-down brackets, but Tim and John are gonna add a ton of strength to them. Okay, so what I'm about to do is burn out a four inch by four inch hole here. That way it gives us access to the bolts we're gonna add to this. So we can reach in here and put a, a nut on every bolt that we can. That way it makes it extra tight to the frame. When we tore this down, there was a big gap between the bracket and the frame. There were still little gaps with solid mount. We bent this piece here, bolt it to the frame, and then we'll weld it all the way down. So what it's ultimately gonna be is a cradle that sandwiches the frame, sandwiches the frame, and have bars in between that make it 100% strong and sturdy. Working on a previously customized vehicle is a lot more work to go back and fix than something you just start from scratch. Riding a wrong, in this case, a bunch of wrongs, have been a big part of my business. On the other hand, I like the challenge. It keeps us on point. Yeah, always rooted for the underdog. And good thing, too, because we're always getting calls. Come on over. We need some help. Hey, what's happening, man? Oh, hey, what's up? Bill? Eric. Nice to meet you, man. This yours, huh? Yeah, yeah, this is mine. Man, what do you do with this thing? Uh, you know, party, we go to shows. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this just isn't keeping up. I got the trailer down in Florida. It pulled into my booth. It was pretty cool, towed behind this cool van. It, it was my birthday, had the for sale sign on it. You know, gave a little nudge to my wife and... Hey, to, to draw the crowd over there. Right. Your booth, huh? Exactly, yeah. What I want it to be like, you know, is when we show up, it's like, you know, stealth has arrived. This badass trailer that we can, we get ice, beer, food, everyone's hanging yeah, out. Yeah, I don't see any place going. here for any ice or any storage or anything right here. Just No, no, it's pretty blank right now. Man, I love the idea of a party trailer. I mean, the basics are here. We just got to expand upon it and make something over the top and just cool. Man, we can definitely wake this thing up. Like this grill, man. This was. Where'd you? Did you find this? <laughs> yeah. Well, I just <laughs> it fit, so I put it in there. <laughs> Maybe new bar top. You know, crazy stereo on this thing. You got a party trailer. You gotta have music. You gotta have a lot of music. And maybe even some air suspension on this thing. Something where you can raise and lower when you're going off road. We can get crazy with it. Yeah, yeah. If you're down for that. Yeah, yeah. Crazy is what I want. If the let's get crazy, all right? Whatever it takes to, to make something cool. I want people to come up to our booth. I want to be able to hear what's going on. I want to be able to project that sound as drinks, as food, people hanging out, music. I mean, this is going to be awesome. Yeah, let's do it. Go all out, you know? Man, get this let's thing get this thing let's going. Do let's do it. <laughs> all right, sweet. All right. party trailer it works okay it draws some attention but we're gonna take this thing and just draw a lot of attention this thing is gonna be not just something people are gonna talk about wherever show it's at wherever event it's at people are gonna want to come see this in person you know on a vehicle you got to work around what's there there's all kind of parameters to work with you know something like this you just to you just have a good time only restricted by your imagination and we're gonna let our imagination just go crazy on this you know, you're creating a party, and what's more fun than that? Looks like it's got snowsage in it. Mine's better than yours. Need a survey, so. Need something. Did you guys, do you ever work? We're just trying it out. Make sure it works, huh? It work. It's not lunchtime anymore. Well, it's taco time now. Yeah. This is the next project we're going to be doing right here. Cool. You know, this thing is, it's cool. We're going to make it way, way cooler. We're going to make this thing party on wheels. Fully functioning, one stop, make it, eat it, party. Absolutely. You know, right now, we just have old wore out grill, old smoke for drinks, you know, new grill, new smoker, just something just crazy. We have a tortilla maker. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> you? Yeah, I'll go with the trailer everywhere. That would be cool. <laughs> yeah.
You know, next problem this thing has is suspension. This thing's almost riding on solid axle. We're gonna put air suspension on this thing too, so you can take it off road, go over hills. This thing's gonna be going to car shows, events, and you know how loud some of those events get. So <laughs> we want this to be the loudest. Not only loud, we want the lighting. We want cooking, <laughs> eating, the total experience. Cool, man, after this thing gets the suspension done, we can go to town. I see a bunch of like tower speakers around here. We got room in here for a few subs. We can get in here, get playing some nice lows out for everybody. Yeah, mm -hmm. fire right out the bottom. Like maybe some acrylic on the top. You can light it up. And cut cup holders into the acrylic. That's an awesome idea. We we're told to go crazy, so that's what we're gonna do is go crazy on it. Awesome. Let's make something just totally off the wall. I think we got it. We've done a couple things. We'll be all right. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's finish my taco. Start tearing this thing down, brother? Yes, sir. I guess taco time's over. It's time to take. Going to? Hey, easy, easy, buddy. <laughs> right now, we're going to go and pull all this wood out of here so Bill and the guys can do what they got to do. Uh, hit! There it goes. Easy enough. Ew. That thing hadn't been cleaned in a while. Going up, bay two. For a regular trailer just going down the street hauling whatever, these axles work pretty well. But with them having that big tire on it, it just makes it want to bounce more. There's no kind of shock system to it. The four link system is going to be a way better system, especially going off road, little twists and turns. You know, you want a little more clearance out of it. It's going to ride a whole lot smoother than just this one axle right here. Yeah, it's probably a good thing he's changing it. It's all broke right here. It's all cracked. It looks like it's been broke a couple of times. I just kept adding weld to it every time it broke. At least it's at the right place now. Bender! Not even that heavy. I wonder it was bending up. Yeah. Heads up! Now we have the axle out of the way, we have the brackets out of the way. We can clean this all up. It'd be nice and easy if we could just go ahead and cut around the circumference of it. But unfortunately, it looks like there's more welds underneath. Hope you got a smoking good deal on that one. <laughs> it's gonna be the last thing this thing ever smokes. Because this is a party trailer, it's about function as much as form. We need to smoke and grill like only Texans can. Something completely custom. So I made a call to the pros. What's up, Bill? What's happening, man? What's up, bro? These things look good, man. Yes, sir. We've got our beautiful heavy-duty barbecue safe smoker and a solid stainless steel industrial gas grill, man, that can handle the vibration of the road. Built all by hand right here in Houston. Craftsmanship looks great. That's all primer for you, ready for that beautiful paint job you're gonna put on it. And I'm excited to see what you guys can do with it. Let's get it off and Let's do get it. it going. You know, it's a real critical part of building this party trailer is getting the cooking and preparation areas all laid out right. We got some really cool custom grills made for this thing and laying this thing out, making it functional, is super important. This time around, we're gonna make sure every part has a purpose and everything is where it's supposed to be. To improve the functionality, we're putting the grill and the smoker on the back of the trailer. What we're gonna do is take the existing barbecue pit and we're gonna drop it down because if we were just to make these pit right here, it would be way up here. And you can't cook meat like that. You're gonna burn the chicken. This is a stronger joint than just butting something up and welding it all the way around. So we're going to make a 45 here and then an offset 45 right here to kick back. Some people would just cut this off and just throw a tube down to kick her over. Uh, that's not how we do things here at Extensive. Woo! You need me to hold it, Jimmy? Pick up on it so I don't mind. Oh! 
Oh. oh. I was going to get a hand. We're gonna use three. All right, so I see we dropped them down about eight inches, so we're not having to reach up too high or bend over too low to pull the meat out. Go ahead and mount these pits and drill some holes for the mounting bolts. Yeah, straight. Whoa, down a little bit. Put up. That looks good, huh, Jamie? Looks nice. Step down the frame, everything. It's gonna make it super easy to cook. Perfect height, yeah. You know, Tim and John have really been putting a lot of work on the F-350, but it's heading in the right direction. Now they're lining up the rear axle to get it connected to the four link. Order right now, we got the axle where it needs to be. And with the bars that we have, we're designing some brackets that go around the rear end and connect the bar to the rear end. So right now, John's just kind of sketching something out. We'll give it to Rudy. He'll burn us four of them out. We'll punch a hole in it and put them on the rear. Looks good. Five, four. Hey, boss. Hey, what's the plan? We need four of these. Four? Four. For a truck this size, we always try to over-engineer it. In that case, we use quarter-inch plate for all the brackets and tabs on this truck, which will make it a whole lot stronger. We're gonna make sure that's flush with the rear end. When we do that, we know this is in line with this one, that one's in line with that one, because this is straight all the way across. We always wanna double check all these measurements to make sure everything's 100%. When you look at this tire, It'll match that tire perfectly, and they'll track together all the way down the road. If not, you'll get it tracking like this, and you'll see the back end of the truck either going that way or that way because the axle's not exactly centered. The reason we weld the insides first before we box it is it makes it a lot stronger. There's a lot more weld to the axle. A lot of people will make these already boxed in, and they'll place them on the axle. Well, you could only weld the outsides. You cannot get to the inside. So we like to do it like this so it's stronger. Some pretty good wheels there. And it's really strong. We're gonna take another step and build some braces off of this. Put some pipe rolled across here, some other pipe crossing it. It'll be fully welded all the way around and it's gonna make a shape that's gonna make it extra strong. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna trace this one where it's gonna intercross inter each other. We'll cut this one, this one will weld to this one, and this one will continue all the way to the rear end. This is gonna be extra fun. The only problem with running all this pipe work like we do is you never get a simple 90 degree cut or a 45 degree cut. Everything's a weird cope that you gotta do to make one pipe tie into the next. It's never really easy, it's always a challenge. But if you take your time and cut a little bit at a time, Grind a little bit at a time, make it fit right. It'll just make the weld look a whole lot better with a tight fit. Time, just takes time. in really rough shape. We replaced the, all the old sketchy rear metal work with a brand new rear suspension. We're gonna mock it all up with the existing four-link bars. 
That looks like shit, man. Hot thread here. This bar is not only short, it's also bent at the end. From a splice. I guess they ran out of material and spliced. I mean, that's one thing you don't do is splice a four lane bar. If we'd have left this like this and like this, nobody would have ever said the first builder did that. It would have been on extensive. And we can't have that. We got to make it look right and perform right. So what we're going to do is go ahead and build two new upper bars for this. You see right here where this one's all bent? They had this much of one left stick left over and then this much of another stick left over. It looks like they just butted it together, beveled it, and then welded it to make one long pipe. The way it's welded together right here, it gives it a point to where it's been heated up. It could be brittle or it could just break off altogether because it won't hold. So we don't want to take a chance in something they spliced together. So we just went and got a whole new piece of DOM that's going to make it what we need, as strong as we need, as straight as we need, and it's going to work to keep the truck straight going down the road. Weld in bungs, and the weld will go from there to there. So when it gets powder coat and everything is done, it'll look real nice and smooth. Perfect. All right, John, weld it out. When this party trailer shows up to events, the owner wants this thing to grab all the attention. Heath and John are gonna make this thing happen with custom seats, bar tops, and a ton of audio. Got it? Yep. There you go then, it's all you. For the countertop, what we're actually gonna do is make an acrylic sandwich. It's gonna be lit up in the center with LEDs. The hard part is gonna be cutting the brittle material without breaking it. That'll work. Are you lining up on this corner? Yes. Well, then they were there. The last thing we have left to do is to cut out the opening for the ice chest. Got this piece of MDF cut out as a template. Look at that. All we gotta do is transfer it into plastic now. Nice. Good fit. Next step is to make the acrylic parts for the top so we can get the lighting in it. I'll use the black plastic as my template and just continue the process all the way down until we get all the pieces made. Once they're done, all we got to do is get someone to come clean up our mess. Yeah, good luck with that. All right, see what we got here. Nice. We decided to go with these boat seats. They can handle any kind of water, any rain, any mud. So it'd work out pretty good, but we can't leave them alone. What we're going to do is going to take the company logo, and we're going to put this on a piece of acrylic and light it up, mold it into the back of the seat, and that'll look pretty cool. All right, we've got all my badges made. So the next thing I gotta do is I gotta take and attach them to the back of the seat. So I'm gonna use some one inch PVC, attach it to the inside so that I can screw into that and not into the frame of the seat. I'll attach the badge to it. And these are just gonna be some transfer marks. When the filler hits them, it'll pick up the marker. And then when I pull it off, that line will be in the bottom of my piece. So as I'm sanding, I know to come up to that line and stop and that keeps everything straight. I worked in a trade school for probably almost 10 years. And one of the hardest things was teaching them to sand. Anytime they looked at sanding, they just kind of thought it was monotonous, boring. Nice. One of the hardest things to do is just kind of get in your head and know that I've got to sand this. It's your space, spend your time, and just go to town. Next thing we're going to do is put the party in them. I'm going to take them apart, get my alpha knife out, and get to carving on it until I can get these LED strips to fit. Once those are in, we'll get it wrapped, get it sealed up, and get them installed on the trailer. When Bill brought us this project, he told us one thing. This thing had to be the loudest thing in the park, the loudest thing at the show, the loudest anywhere it went. The name of the game here is just as many speakers as you can fit. Anywhere you can find a spot, you cram a speaker and make it loud. This thing's gonna be so loud, it's gonna have people thinking, what in the hell were they thinking when they did that? It's gonna slap them right in the face. You know, the bar top and seats, they're done. And we got the party trader back from powder coat. We just gotta hook everything up and it's tailgate time. Tom and I are doing the final install of the air tanks, bags, compressors, and four lanes.
Hooking up lights used to be difficult, but LEDs have made it easier by a hundredfold. Small, waterproof, and durable enough to go anywhere. I'm adding about 170 feet of LED lights. Sound, I'm putting in a soundelier. I hope the owner has some earplugs. To say we worked a lot on this trailer is a total understatement. We put everything we can put in on this thing, and today we're gonna give it back. What's happening, man? What's up? Man, appreciate y'all meeting me out here at 1886 Humble Backyard Bar. This place is all about having a good time, having a couple of drinks, and just kicking back. What a better place to bring you your trailer. Yeah, I appreciate you having me out here. This place looks awesome. Well, man, you said go crazy with it. We went insane with it. Nice. I can't wait for you to see this thing. Hell yeah. That's it's awesome. definitely over the top. That's so cool. I can't wait to see it. This is going to be great. You ready to check this thing out? Hell yeah, man. Let's yeah, see it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, my. <laughs> Dude, whoa, are you whoa, kidding whoa, me? <laughs> Look at that thing. <laughs> Holy <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, wow. I've never even seen speakers like that before. This is just crazy. Oh, my God. Did you break? Well, you wanted something to draw some attention, right? Oh, dude. That thing's insane. I love it. What's up, guys? You have something to do with this thing? A little bit. <laughs> you all right? Great. Cool. So good man. now. As you see here, you know, we touched every part of this with a big, heavy four link on it, so it looks mean and nasty, too. Yeah, I love the four link. I can't wait to really get under there and look at everything you did. I can't wait to get it off road, drop it down, bring it up. This, this is going to be perfect. You had old smoker in the back and a grill up front that you found somewhere. I don't, I'm not real sure. Yeah. You know, the boys pit maker got you hooked up with the smoker and grill, you know, centralized in the rear spot so you can, you know, keep all the cooking back to the back and just worry about the party in the front. The old barbecue, it was trash, total garbage. And this new stuff, it's insulated. It's got all these layers. These guys are going to set me up with everything I need. And I, it's just so much better than before. You know, when it first came in, we sat down. We had tacos on it. First thing we figured out that it wasn't very comfortable to sit down and eat on. So we had to get comfortable seats in it. It's such a good idea to use boat seats because instead of the wood, I mean, now I don't have to worry about it. No matter what I throw at it, we're good to go. Bill gave us one other thing he told us. It's got to be loud. We took a stack of amplifiers, put enough power in this thing to power six or seven cars. You know, we put it all <laughs> into one. Six by nines down the side, really just firing right into your gut. We've got the tens overhead. we got woofers down on the bottom. This thing is so loud, you'll be drawing people for at least a mile away. It is loud. That is Make nice. it a little bit better. We put lights everywhere. We even lit up the countertop. Lights in the seats, lights around all the rest of the speakers. I mean, this thing part light up. I mean, the attention to detail is just unreal. It looks like everything in excess. Exactly what I wanted. You definitely got that. <laughs> How about we fire this thing up and really see what it's about? Oh, yeah. 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 Man, the two pound burgers or what? Heck yeah, man. Texas size uh, burgers <laughs> for a Texas size party. Wow. When Eric is checking this thing out, I can tell he's just amazed by what he's seeing right now. Check out the... <laughs> I can't believe how much sound those put out. It's unbelievable. Overall, I am just totally blown away. I mean, I, I asked him to go crazy with it, and he, it's just totally over the top, built in. This is crazy. Thank you for everything. This thing's freaking awesome. Got it, man. <laughs> I'm bringing it out to SEMA, Glamis. I'm going to put it out front of my shop up in New Hampshire. We're just going to have a party everywhere we go. Party on wheels. Never had a burger like this. Look at the size of this thing. <laughs> Thanks for everything. Mm-hmm. The front suspension on the 2017 F-350 is in way better shape than the rest of it but we still have to clean up the shoddy metal work before we even think about Knock the high spots out of it. We're not trying to make it smooth and grind it to where it's gonna be paintable. They're gonna come back and put some body filler on it and be ready to paint. Well, Tim did a great job grinding it off and cleaning it up for us. The next step that we will do, we'll come down with some Bondo. One nice trick that I've learned is for curves like these, you might just rub the Bondo on your finger like this, run it across and you get a flatter surface that blends into the curve. And there comes the sanding next, which I'm finna start off with 36 grit, and then come back with 80 and finish it off. Now we're getting ready to prime it. 
The good thing about the primer is you will be able to see some of the imperfections that are around here. Scratches from the 36, stuff like that will have to get addressed again. So we can get everything smoothed out because once we paint, there's no going back. Here, it has to be done right no matter what. You guys did a great job on this. This thing's looking good. Ready to blow this thing apart and get it painted and coated, huh? Mm-hmm. What the? What is it? A bolt welder on another bolt. Just when I think I've seen it all. This bolt's function was to hold this hanger to the frame, but I don't know what that bolt's function was. That's something new to me. I've, that's custom. I guess we got a new berry for the tree. Now we got everything stripped down. We're gonna send it out the powder coat, send the rest of the body work. In a couple days, we put it back together. So where are these going? I gotta find a new branch. So years ago, there used to be a big tree in the back of the lot, and everything we'd cut off just get thrown around this tree. Eventually, a big storm came, knocked that whole tree down. So we took it, moved this out here, built a big pad, put a post coming up, started welding up here, and that's how the tree of shame got started. All this is is stuff that other shops have done that we felt was unsafe. So then over the years, as you added another piece, another piece, another piece, it's now growing like an oak tree. It's just growing up and up and up. Through to form today, it just grows a little bit bigger, gets a couple more branches onto it. I think that's it. Shoot. So 20 more years, it'll be as tall as the other one? Maybe taller. Five years? Five years. <laughs> All right, well, shoot. Let's get back to it. Somebody got that. You know, there's a lot of work had to be done in this big blue F-350, but now's the time to give it back to CJ and his family. Harrisburg Art Museum. It's a cool spot. Huh? It is. I like the murals and everything, but uh, he gave me a call, and I don't think we're here to look at paintings. Definitely not going to look at paintings today. We got something else for you to look at. Yeah. You ready to check this thing out? I'm ready to check it out. CJ has a whole fleet of matching blue trucks. I can't wait for his F-350 to join the team. It's hauling. Man, that's crazy. I love it. That looks yeah, good. Hell yeah, man. God. I know it's been a while since you've seen that, it right? It has, man. That looks so good. That is a killer that setup. Thing. Killer setup. That's going to look awesome at shows. Hey. Hey. My wife's here. Surprise. What a surprise. <laughs> awesome work. Looks good. Thank you. Look who it is. Little one. What's up? Bill had the whole family here, the whole fleet, and it was just super cool. CJ, when this thing came in, you know, you couldn't even drive it, much less put this thing to work. Just nightmare after nightmare. Like opening a can of worms. It just never stopped. We went from front to back and got it rubber before the now. Safety wasn't a big concern with the last shop, I guess. <laughs> As you can see right now, problem solved. Six all in the car. Yep. If you can see on the front, the front axle was just, it was just garbage. Yeah, it was bad. It just looked like it was going to fall apart yeah. any second. We ground off all the old welds, re-welded everything, body work, and painted. Made this thing look good. That's I mean, that, this thing's coming at you, you see it. So it's got to look good. Yep. And from that, you see the new four-link bars going all the way back to the new bracketry on the axle. They had spliced together four-link bars. I'd... Crazy. I just get that out of yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. That's all on our tree of shame. Yeah. Now. Looks good. So we got it all bolted to the frame nice and strong, and we have tube work underneath there Man, I connecting love from side to side. Not just, you know, strong to do its job. It's got some style to it. Definitely. And now it looks amazing. The tubing, the support, it's just good that he went through every inch of this truck to make sure that it was perfect. As far as the rear axle, we just started fresh, cut everything off, welded everything up, and just made you some cool bag mounts, four link mounts, and it's all artwork. It's a piece of art underneath there. And now we get to haul with it. That's it, put it to work. You know, looking back on this project to see, how, you know, having to rebuild all the underneath of this thing to make it safe for CJ and his family, you know, it's just something we had to do. We had to make sure it's right. Bill, man, you killed it. From the suspension, everything you touched, Amazing work, amazing work. I get to haul, 
my family's safe in it. I couldn't be happier, man. To be able to use this truck and have my family with me on these trips is awesome. I feel safe and I have a very reliable truck to get from my house to each show. You know, most of the time when you're building a project, you start fresh. You know, this project we get in, we thought we were just going from A to C and ended up going all the way to Z. I mean, there's a bunch of hidden issues that we had to address. I mean, that's what we do. Make it safe, make it cool, and make it right.